जय राधमारवा कुंजाबिहारी गोपी चंद्र वल्लभ दीवधारी ยโสดนันดานะปัจจานรัญญาญาณยามุนาทีราวนาชาวีจยราดมาดวากุญญาวิหาร <laughs> ยโสดนานาบรรจนรัญญาญาณยามุนาทีราวัจจา Swain Kaisi Shivakvidan Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Nant Pekori Vaishnava Vrindiki Skambibiti Founder Acharya's Divine Grace Shila Prabhupada Ki Princhad Ho Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pinitinam Yadveda Gatatasya Sadikor Ki Ho Glory to the Assembled Vaishnava Ho Glory to the Assembled Vaishnava Ho Glory to the Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga Ho Premanande so I thank you very much for all being here and uh, allowing me to say a few words. Actually, I'm going to let the slides probably do the talking. Got a few little explanations that I can give <coughs> um, about some of the slides there. And some of the senior devotees who are here, if you've got anything that you can add to some of these slides, please put up your hand let us know at any point in time. We can make this a little bit of a conversational thing. So, as we know, today is the anniversary of the installation of um, <coughs> Sri Sri Radha Govardhan Dari. So, um, that was in 1979, so the farm had been active for two years, so I just would like to trace the history because I think Ambika Madhiji is going to elaborately describe the installation of the deities and talk about deity worship later on this afternoon, so I'm not going to tread on her toes too much. But there is a fair bit of information here, a fair bit of history, very, very colourful history, I might add. And very poignant too, because we're actually it's historic. Not only is it historic in the sort of yatra of New Govardhan, but in the history of the world, how ISKCON developed. We're a really important part of it. We're one of the few, I don't know, maybe dozen or two dozen farms that were developed around the world at that point in time, which really proper part left. Having said that, uh, when the Barbadi Prabhu found this acreage somewhere in March or early April in 1977, the GBC Hari Sori Prabhu sent a letter off to Srila Prabhupada saying, we found this farm, it's a really nice farm and we want to call it New Govardhan, so can we have your blessing, in other words. So this is a very, very historic letter <laughs> where Srila Prabhupada, I'd read it, but it, that's the letter, right? So it's available everywhere. So Srila Prabhupada offered his blessings to Harry Sori. But, uh, and then in the third, fourth chapter there, he says, yes, New Govardhan 
this uh, uh, approved new governor uh, will be Can can't read, huh? Sorry? Can't, no, I'm not going to touch it, actually. But uh, you have my blessings for you, Governor, and it's just a develop, uh, develop it nicely. But what's important in the first few pages, first few paragraphs, he talks about uh, initiations. So Harry Sorry, he received this letter on the 20th of April uh, and on the 28th of April he replied and he said, yes, I approve of the initiations of uh, um, some of the so-called, his name shall be Shiki Pichidari, Dasidari, and I approve Jackie and she, her name is Vainadara Das, so he accepted Vainadara is still around in the area. So he accepted her and Sikipichi as his disciples. And then in the next chapter, he said, I also approved brother the initiation for Jayashula, Vasushreshta, Tita Guna, and Badradasi. And I will send the Brahmin threads for Vasushreshta and Jayashula Prabhu and the mantra. And uh, my instruction is that they keep clean on the inside and outside. So that was very. Um, I was very fortunate to actually uh, get that uh, off Srila Prabhupada because at that point in time Srila Prabhupada's health was failing and that was one of the last times where Srila Prabhupada actually approved personally of the diksha of his disciples whether it's first or second diksha because shortly after that on the 9th of May which is only about 10 or 11 days later the disciples came um, Bhakti um, um, Swarup Davada, no, um, <laughs> um, who was it? Huh? Tamar- Sat Swarup, yeah, I know Swarup was in it. Sat Swarup Maharaj and Tamal Krishna Maharaj came to Sri Prabhupada said, there are so many disciples that would like to get initiation, but we're holding them off because we know that you're not very well and if you take disciples, then you take their karma, you'll even get sicker, right? So then he said, no, you can initiate on my behalf to those particular disciples. And then they went through which ones could initiate on his behalf, and he said, that would be my disciples. So from that point in time, the initiations proceeded, but they went on automatically with our Shula Prabhupada's actually uh, recognising who's his disciples and who weren't, but they were still his disciples. So that's a very important point because um, this is going to come up later on in some of the slides. Then, of course, there was another conversation which I have to mention just to clarify things that in July uh, this was going on, and then Satsvarup Maharaj had to ask this question very, very sensitively Srila Prabhupada, what's going to happen when you pass away? So, Srila Prabhupada said, then they, they are their disciples and they wanted some clarifications and he explained it very clearly that they are the disciples of my disciples, right? So, that was the two very important conversations that went on. So, this is also figured in the history of New Govardhan here. So, I've got a few slides here. Thank you. So, uh, as we know, we moved on. <laughs> we had a bus, right? <laughs> Actually, I don't remember this, but Krodeshwara swears that the first time the bus came onto this property, the reason why we got this property, why it was so cheap or less expensive, was that there was no access, there was no bridge, right? We had to go up to the bridge over there and go through the Mackenzie Territory and come over to here. So the first or second time we'd come over here, it was always raining in those days, always raining, the bus got bogged, right? And (coughs) Protosvara says that Sababi told me to go and get red to pull us out of the bog. (laughs) So I can't remember that, but I guess he did. So we come over here, there's only eight of us. 
And so we had a look and um, then we settled in. And as we can see, there's, um, there's the, what, what we call the White House over there and the early settlers, the Brahmacharis there. And I know we had some horses that come on. That, um, and then we used to have, our still had Sunday feasts, invite people, and we used to sit there. And the kitchen, uh, our kitchen was at the back of the, I'll call it the lotus spot, so we don't, it used to be formerly known as the White House, so I'll just say lotus spot because that's what everybody knows here. Yeah. Okay, and um, some nice views we can see that. It was sort of like what was left of a dairy farm, so it was a different aspect there. Trees were in different places. And one thing that was noted, it was so wet, and the grass was so tall, it was amazing. So that was just some of the, um, as you can see, there's probably about 30 devotees that first came here. There was like a few brahmacharis who used to stay under the, under the house. Um, where all the quarters were, that was just uh, just stumps there in the bare floor. Oh, thanks. Could you turn some of these lights off for a bit? So, yeah, turn that one off so maybe we can see a little bit clearer. And we used to, it's sort of a very communal um, setting there. And it was just the other days, this was about 1977. Okay, yes. Oh, uh, microphone. Microphone. No. Nope. Don't have it. Okay. Adder. They saw a, a death adder going downstairs into the men's ashram, which was really kind of a garage, and everyone became really scared. So that night, all the men slept outside, where there's a thousand death adders, instead of going into the garage, because they were too scared to sleep inside, because they knew there was a death adder. And the woman, there was only about five of us, we lived in the cow shed, over oh. the very far side, and we used to walk back and forth, no electricity, no running water. No toilets. And, and lots of mud. Lots of mud. Thank you. Uh, the cow shed is yeah, somewhere. Okay, so that was settling on the farm. One very important aspect, I think this was really a milestone, that we're only on the farm for about six months and we decided to do, a, uh, we had a big festival and we called it the Festival of the Sacred Cow. Right? Fantastic name. And the devotees were very enthusiastic because Prabhupada was still on the planet, so we're trying to please Prabhupada so much. So we plastered the whole Tweed Heads to Byron Bay full of posters on every pole and everywhere, the festival of the sacred cow. And consequently, we got a lot of people. I remember that the cars were sort of lined up outside on Telgum Road, going right back about half a kilometre, and everybody walked up. And we had three marquees. We had nothing. The temple wasn't here at that point in time. But we had a great time. It was fantastic. There's a few slides here. Maybe I can mention that this here it was... I think it was early November, I don't think it was October, it was early November, but there was a fire jagger going, fire ceremony, and there was an initiation ceremony, and it was that last initiation of Srila Prabhupada's disciples. So there was about half a dozen or eight disciples that just made it in as Prabhupada's disciples, because three days later or four days later, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada left the planet. So that was a very historic initiation there. And then we had a... We had about 14 cows at that point in time, I think, so there's a bit of uh, go puja going on in the top uh, corner there. And it was a lace full of events. I know we had three dramas, you know, little plays, and some of them were spontane spontaneously made up on the day, so, uh, or the day before, and we rehearsed it. So that's that one on the far left there. You see that bikey looking guy there. It was a really humorous play which he put together in about half an hour. It was all to do with bikies. So he come in 
there's a there's a a uh, tough bikey on a Harley, and he's going, hurry, 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 like that. And then the next guy comes in uh, with the beard, and he's got a Honda. So he's going, hmm, 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 so, right? And the third guy, see the, <laughs> see the guy with the shirt and tie? He comes in on a Vespa. He goes, Vespa, 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 like that, right? So they all come together, and there's sort of a little bit of banter between the Harley guy and the Vespa guy, you know? And it sort of goes on for a while, and then they leave, and they end up in some other destination, and they say, this we've got, what are you doing here? Like, like that. So the point of the play, I think, was that everybody ends up in the same destination, doesn't matter what sort of vehicle they have. Right? So that was just a little point. So that was one of the plays. They were fantastic. And then there was also the epic dancing competition. We can see that there. Um, you will notice that all the brahmacharis are shirtless. I don't know if we had curtains or not, but we sort of dispensed with them. And it was a really sweaty dancing competition and you're supposed to keep your hands up as you danced. And I'll still never forgive the judge for eliminating me in the second round because he said my hands were down. So anyway, I thought I was in there with a chance, but actually Gopinatha Charya, he's right at the front there. Oh, there he is on the right hand corner. He was eventually the winner. So um, there's some of the, there's a shot of the Gopuja. It was a very successful event and everybody that came was really impressed with the farm here. Then of course, as I was saying, three days later, Srila Prabhupada passed away. So um, straight after Gopuja, we have the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. So then we have the... Then we began some, a serious building here because there were some funds coming in. And we began to build some houses for the Grihastas. So that one over there, you can see that's one of the, we call them the pine bolts. So they were kit homes. So we've got four kit homes and we put them together for families. That's the old cow, <laughs> that's the old cow shed that Chamri was talking about that the ladies were staying in over the hill. Over there, over there. And there's a bit of construction work going there. This is the milking shed that's in the, but you might be interested to see that right from that sort of um, very start that the bullock training program was going on. So there's uh, um, maybe Ram Bhadra's kind of six bullocks. And they actually used the bullocks to plough the land. We had this old tractor, but the bullocks were very, very useful actually. And uh, one of our first crops was a whole lot of lemongrass. We had about four acres of lemongrass down there. The idea was we're going to market lemongrass tea, but we never got to that um, level. So there's milking the cows by hand. And we had some horses on the farm that would help um, gather the cows. And some of the leaders used to like to ride the horses around the property and check out our 1,000 acre property here. So. Um, so the first building probably were the pine bolts and then some other sheds down there where the yoga hall is and the administration building, they were renovated. And at, um, at the same time, the farming was going on. So you can see the potato patch. I can't remember, but it looks like a prolific potato patch there. We're harvesting potatoes and then we had uh, all the, we didn't have volunteers, but we had exuberant, enthusiastic brahmacharis who would be put to the paddocks and would pick the potatoes there and then go out, go out on Sankatan after that. So um, we have lots of mud there. That was, our, that was our one car that we had, farm car there. And I don't know what that crop behind it might have been the lemongrass. I'm not quite sure. And if you have a look at this uh, picture over here, you'll see the bus. This is the, this is the bus that actually came to the farm full of eight people. That was the start of it all. But the bus kept going and um, we had programs there. It looks like a program on the farm there. I remember the paddle van. It used to be about seven of us go in that paddle van to Brisbane. There'd be, I'd be in the front seat with the driver and there'd be five in the back of the paddle van. You know, We'd drive off to Brisbane to do some... Um, um, Sankatan collection. So, but you will notice that the person playing the harmonium, does anyone recognize him? He's really obscure there, it's from Swami there. 
Sorry about the photo, but uh, you know. And also, it's probably Rabbi Swabi. So we used to go to Burley Heads. That's Burley Heads there. So we used to, um, you know, take the whole farm, the whole community, go to Burley Heads on a Sunday, and we hand out watermelon pieces, right? And we have a big kitan, and everybody be dancing around there. A lot of brahmacharis, as you can see there. Uh, this was rather an epic one there. See the fire sacrifice that was in the lotus pot in the hall of the lotus pot there. And, I think Sabo was the one that was, oh, Harry Suri was the one conducting the fire sacrifice. I think I was there, all I remember was smoke. There was nowhere for the smoke to get out, so we're all sort of dancing and coughing. I think it was a, um, some marriage, maybe some marriage uh, um, ceremony there. And the last one over here is a puppy dog. Uh, it's Harry Ram. So, as soon as you mention Hari Ram to all the old devotees here, they all get excited because somehow or other this dog just came onto the farm and he became part of the community that he'd be down the bottom and as soon as the car had come driving up to the top here, he'd chase the car up the top and then chase it back down again while he could when he was young and he'd just eat prasadam. And and that's right, he paid up, he did all these fantastic things, we just call him Hari Rama, right? We swear he went back to Godhead. Here he's just making friends with someone over here, a lizard that the kids, Sababi kids, that was their pet. Okay. So, um, so technical destruction, so in 1978, we got this block of land here, we um, leveled it and we had a, an engineer, Prahlad Bhaktadas, who, dis, who started to design uh, this temple, what we're in right now. It's meant to be a temporary shelter, but 50 years later it's still standing. <laughs> it's beautiful. I know we commissioned um, someone who was sort of like an outside devotee to do those stained glass windows, and I'm just amazed at the you know, beauty of it. He was, um, in and out of a, I'd say, mater um, material consciousness and <laughs> gravitating between spiritual material consciousness. But while he was on the spiritual level, he put these windows together for us, and that was really integral part of this temple. So, and then they built the walls. So Barbadi went over to New Vrindavan and saw how they were doing it. So it's sort of like a copy of the new Vrindavan um, temple there and that's some of the temple construction going on there you can see and then there was the groundbreaking ceremony which was a very auspicious occasion and on the right here the, sorry that the photos are not so clear but that was the opening of the bridge at the same time we had to cross over the river and there was a little bit of um, um, sort of um, acrimony there because the person next door by this time he wasn't very helpful he was red red mckenzie james's father he was really upset at the fact that so many haris were coming onto the property and he couldn't cope with it so he was trying to discourage us so we said well we won't come <laughs> we had to go past his property all the time so he said he wouldn't let us build the bridge because he had the it, it's common it's crown land but you can lease it so he'd lease the land and he said no you can't build the bridge so we had to take him to court and it actually became news all over australia about the Hari krishnas not being able to access their property we, we made a big deal of it but in the end we won the court case so we could build the bridge and that bridge still stands a lot of people say, why don't you build a bigger bridge? Well, we can't build a bigger bridge because the floods, when they come, will wash it away. So it is what it is at this point in time. Or we can build a huge bridge, which would sort of suck up all our funds and still, the bridge is what it is. It works most of the days in the year, except for when it floods one or two days. So we had a big affair there, the opening of the bridge, and that was a groundbreaker because all the cars used to drive across the river, and after a few months, all the shockers and everything would rust and give out, and a lot of maintenance going on there. So, we the bridge was a, 
a real sort of booster that we didn't, and then Red shut off the gate there so we couldn't go past this property, and so there was a sort of acrimony, but the ironic thing is now we have his son James, who um, inherited the maintenance of the farm of his father, although it belongs to his mother, but then he had a um, fallout with his aunties who lived next door, and they've shut him out from going the other way. So the only access he has is come through our bridge. And so to go through the bridge, the Jits made the condition with him that he maintains the bridge. So I don't know what Redby's thinking about that and rolling over in his grave about that one. So when we made the temple in 1979, we had the big installation ceremony here and so that was 77 we had to go puja and in 1979 did the installation so that top left hand corner is an initiation ceremony so this is like the first big initiation ceremony in australia where the disciple of srila Prabhupada is taken on his own disciples so um, that was like an epic one. There was probably a few other sort of smaller initiations, but this was the first big one because Melbourne, when we had these festivals, Melbourne Temple and Sydney, everybody had come to this festival here on Govardhan and be a really um, joyous atmosphere for a few days. So it was very uplifting. So we can see a few of the sacrifices, some of the deities there are being brought there. I can't recognise, I think it was. Uh, little Radha Krishna deities there and on the right we see the first Vyasasana of Srila Prabhupada there so the steps are there but um, of course the Vyasasana has changed now um, so the next slide is a little bit of a story about the deities so I don't know if all, well, some of you know that story but uh, when we ordered the deities in Rajasthan, there's this one, we call them Stapati, that makes the deities. He's a very, very talented person. So we, Harry Suri went over there, he got the best person to make our Radha Gavadhan Dari Didi. So we ordered them early in 1979, and they said, yes, six months, six months, we'll have it. And he comes back there in six months' time, and they said, no, no, we don't have your deities. But he said, what are these deities? He goes, oh, they are the deities for France, for New Mayapur and France. So he said, no, no, we're having an initiation. And he took them. He said, they're our deities. I'm taking them now. And they couldn't do anything. So you can see that this, this is rather Govardhandari. And then the Stapati, he had to make some new deities for um, new Mayapur. So, of course, they got left behind a little bit, but eventually they made the deities. So you can see the similarity between the new Mayapur deities and uh, our particularly new Gavadan deities there. And on the left, there's, there's a chateau at new Mayapur. That's their deities on the altar there. And this is our deities here. It's the same setup. But what was really amazing was that uh, the Harry Sori uh, ended up meeting Siddler and uh, marrying Siddler, and she happened to be the one that was choosing the deities, uh, organising the deities for New Mayapur. And then after a while, she cottoned on. Actually, you, because she came here, and they look similar. Actually, you're the one <laughs> that got the new government. They're our deities for Mayapur, and you got them first, we had to wait. So. Um, so pretty ironic. So that's, uh, I think the installation first of all was with Shishi Radha um, Govardhandari and then I'm pretty sure that Gorn in time, Krishna Balaram came a little bit later on. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That they came on the bus and they were... Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, they were established. So if you've been to Brisbane Temple, you'll see two Gornitai deities. They were uh, cast by Baskara Das in 1976. We were watching it happen there, and we installed them 
on the bus or travelling deities. So when the bus came here, the, there were a resident deities. And then somewhere along the line in 1985, um, these deities, uh, Bornitai, arrived in Brisbane and we installed them in Brisbane in 1985, December 1985. And somewhere in 1986, there was a... Um, uh, there was a, in, a changing of the deities. Uh, I think these deities came here and Brisbane closed down for a short period of time then when it reopened, the Gornetai deities from the bus went over to Brisbane and there's still the current deities in Brisbane at this point in time. So that was uh, my presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening. It's, I've got a couple of minutes there. And... Um, just before I close this, I have to show this one. There's this character here. I don't know what he's on about, and I still don't know what he's on about now. I've taken about 40 years ago. <laughs> this one I get in <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Has anybody got any questions or comments? Yes. Um, microphone. Just a clarification for me that when you pointed to the Gorni tides, it's a little Gorni tide went to Brisbane. These big Gorni tides. Small ones. Yeah, the big, the big Gorni tide and Christian Bale are installed in December 1980. Okay, yeah, thank right, you very much. 28th of December 1980. So, so that was, that was just a short festival. time later, big yeah. festival. Yeah, everyone, we all, everyone came up from Sydney. Yeah, because. I think um, at that point in time, Krishna Kirtan and I, I can't see anyone else who we were, oh, and Chavari, we were all Sydney devotees, so when there's a big festival in New Gavdan, we used to make that trip, some, some interesting trips up to here, to New Gavdan, spend a couple of days and go back to Sydney again. And also, Maharaj was on the road travelling here and there, sometimes he come, sometimes he wouldn't. And also the, that old bus. It became the, there was an old bus, I don't know if it was the same bus, became the Brahmacharya Ashram here. It did it? Because I, I, when I visited it the first time I stayed in, it was parked on a bit of a tilt, so you sort of slept. Sort on of the slept tilt? On the tilt, and you wake up a bit tilted. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, just one quick story there about the, that, because uh, that became Brahmacharya Ashram because the bottom actually became a wax factory we used to sell manufacture wax candles which are really nice carved. I don't know if you, all of you remember them but they're called Hawaiian candles and they had all this elaborate carving and we used to go door to door and sell them and we had a big wax vat in there so <coughs> there was no room for people to stay in there. I still, we used to make these sort of imitation animals, sometimes we'd make imitation cats. I know we had one cat here actually fell in the vat and they picked him out there and he was like <laughs> A wax cat, you know. Some of the early history there. More snake stories? No, no, not a snake story. Just when we came up for the festival, as Krishna Kirtan said, the excitement and the... Oh, it was just the best festivals ever coming up here. And we'd come up in combi vans, transit vans, so many devotees, and we'd all drive up. It was the old Pacific Highway. But when we got here, um, we used to, well, the woman anyway, I don't know where the men were, but the woman, we used, they used to have tents for us down next to the river. And we would bathe in the river, and we'd be here for three to five days. We would bathe in the river, um, and we'd walk up when this was on. So, and we absolutely, I mean, admittedly, we were only in our early 20s, but we didn't think anything of it. We were just so ecstatic to be here, but no heating, no electricity. Well, and uh, we're all in tents, about eight to a tent or something like that. It was all still that enthusiasm that because Srila Prabhupada, just while Srila Prabhupada was on the planet, there was this sort of different um, level of, I call it exuberant enthusiasm that, you know, Srila Prabhupada generated when I first saw Srila Prabhupada in Melbourne. He was uh, 80 years old, 79, 80 years old, and a diminutive person, like looking at the body, is a diminutive person, very serene. But you could tell the energy by the 
brahmacharis and brahmacharinis they were around him all dancing all excited there was so much action there so it's like he was the core and he was generating this energy like that and that energy stayed you know like for quite a few years that we really wanted to push Rila Prabhupada's movement on of course now in the we still do it, but this is sort of like a different sort of generation now, a couple of generations, like different mood. Still very excited, but it was sort of like an air of madness or something, you know. So, um, yeah. So, but so even okay. staying in the tents was like for the 79 installation. So, yeah, we were still... Still there, yeah. The enthusiasm was so intense. S Prabhu. Um, when the Shiro Prabhupada came to Melbourne in 76, you were talking about this enthusiasm. So the, as a reporter came, one of the newspapers, he came to the Gora Arti. And the Gora, Gora Arti was wild, it was just it, oh, extraordinary. Gora Creeper. It, it was the evening that Prabhupada came on that day. And uh, in those days they used to call a big party, they used to call it a rage. And we call it a rage. He said, I never knew what a rage was. And he brought, reported this in the newspaper. He said, I never knew what a rage was till I went to a Hare Krishna temple. Yeah, it was so quite... The, the quite devotees difficult. were so enthusiastic. A lot of sweat there. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you very much, Jai. All Prue, Prue, one a question. Prue, one question. Yes. Is it true that... Prabhupada was told about the name of the farm? I, I didn't... Was oh, it? yeah, in the letter here. All oh, right. Harry Sori wrote okay, to him okay, that yeah, we have yeah, found yeah. the farm New Govardhan, so Prabhupada gave his blessing. Yes, New Govardhan is a okay. really nice name. I used a lot of natural products to build, he said that, and, you know, f I think he mentioned Varna Ashram there, trying, you know, instill Varna Ashram. Process. So it's all in that letter. You can read it. Yeah. You can look it up. Shula Prabhupada's letter to New, New Govardhan, Govardhan, 1977. It's I, I, I got it off the okay. uh, internet. Thank you. Okay. Ajit's got a good copy of it, but yeah, if you want. Jai. Hare Krishna.